1985년 4월 22일 일리노이 시카고에서 태어났으며 8살에 맥킨토시 컴퓨터를 이용한 프로그래밍을 배우기 시작했고 2004년 스탠퍼드 대학을 입학했으나 1년 만에 자퇴하며 대학을 중퇴한 친구들과 위치 기반 소셜 네트워킹 회사인 루트를 공동 설립해 2012년에 매각했습니다. 이후에는 엔젤 투자자로 활동하며 에어비앤비, 레딧, 스트라이프, 인스타카트, 핀터레스트 등의 여러 스타트업 초기 펀딩에 참여함으로써 막대한 수익을 벌어들였고 2015년 포브스가 선정한 30세 미만의 최고 투자자로 선정되기도 했습니다. 15년 12월부터는 테슬라의 CEO 일론 머스크와 뜻을 함께하며 오픈 AI를 창업하여 공동 의장이 되었습니다. 그의 이름은 사무엘 해리스 알트만 샘 알트만입니다. 언어 모델의 혁신을 가져온 챗 GPT의 아버지 인간을 뛰어넘는 인공지능에 대한 열망과 일상과 업무 혁신을 통해 삶을 풍요롭게 만들겠다는 샘 알트만 그가 직접 이야기하는 AI의 미래에 대해 알아보도록 하겠습니다. 알파 컨덕터 채널 구독과 좋아요 알림 설정하시면 최신 영상을 가장 빠르게 시청하실 수 있습니다. Well, I mean, there are political figures in the U.S. and around the world, like Donald Trump, who have successfully tapped into a feeling of you know, dislocation, uh, anger of the working class, the feeling of you know exacerbating inequality or. A technology leaving people behind. Is there the danger that uh, you, you know, know AI furthers those trends? Yes, for sure. I think that's something to think about. But one of the things that surprised us very pleasantly on the upside, because uh, you know when you start building a technology, you start doing research, you, you kind of say, well, we'll follow where the science leads us. And then when you put a product, you'll say, this is going to co-evolve with society, and we'll follow where users lead us. But it's not. You get you get to steer it, but only somewhat. There's some which is just like. This is what the technology can do. This is how people want to use it. And this is what it's capable of. And this has been much more of a tool than I think we expected. It is not yet, and again, in the future, it'll, it'll get better. But it's not yet like replacing jobs in the way, or to the degree that people thought it was going to. It is this incredible tool for productivity. And you can see people magnifying what they can do um, by a factor of two or five, or in some way that doesn't even talk to it. Makes sense to talk about a number because they just couldn't do the things at all before, and that is, I think, quite exciting. This this new vision of the future that we didn't really see when we started. We kind of didn't know how it was going to go, and very thankful the technology did go in this direction. But where this is a tool that magnifies what humans do, lets people do their jobs better, lets the AI do parts of jobs, and of course jobs will change, and of course some jobs will totally go away. But the human drives are so strong, and the sort of way that society works is so strong that I think, and I can't believe I'm saying this because it would have sounded like an ungrammatical sentence to me at some point. But I think AGI will get developed in the reasonably close-ish future, and it'll change the world much less than we all think. It'll change jobs much less than we all think. And again, that sounds—I may be wrong again now—but that wouldn't have even compiled for me as a sentence at some point, given my conception then of how EGI was going to go. As you've watched the technology develop, have you both changed your views on how significant the job dislocation and disruption will be as AGI comes into focus? So this is actually an area that we, you know, we have a policy research team that studies this, and they have seen pretty significant impact in terms of changing the way people do jobs rather than job dislocation. And I think that's actually going to accelerate in that it's going to change more people's jobs. Um, but as Sam said, so far, it hasn't been the significant re replacement of jobs. You know, you hear a coder say, OK, I'm like two times more productive, three times more productive, whatever, than they used to be. And I like, can never code again without this tool. You mostly hear that from the younger ones. but. Um, It turns out, and I think this will be true for a lot of industries, the world just needs a lot more code than we have people to write right now. And so it's not like we run out of demand. It's that people can just do more. Expectations go up, but ability goes up too. There's a question here that I think is a, a really good one. We are at Davos. Climate change is on the agenda. Um, the question is, does, does could, well, I'm going to give it a different spin. Considering the compute costs and the, the, the need for chips, does the development of AI and the path to AGI threaten to take us in the opposite direction on the climate? Um, we do need 
way more energy in the world than I think we thought we needed before. My, my whole model of the world is that the two important currencies of the future are compute slash intelligence and energy. Um, you know, the ideas that we want and the ability to make stuff happen and uh, the ability to like run the compute. And I think we still don't appreciate the energy needs of this technology. Um, the good news, to the degree there's good news, is there's no way to get there without a breakthrough. We need fusion or we need like radically cheaper solar plus storage or something at massive scale, like a scale that no one is really planning for. Um, so we, it's totally fair to say that AI is going to need a lot of energy, but it will force us, I think, to invest more in the technologies that can deliver this, none of which are the ones that are burning the carbon. Like That'll be those all those right. unbelievable number of fuel trucks. And the by the way, you back all the uh, jets there. one or more nuclear uh, Yeah, I, I personally think that is either the most likely or the second most likely approach you to You feel power like the world. the world is more receptive to that technology? Now, certainly, historically, not in the US. Um, I think the world is still, unfortunately, pretty negative on fission. Super positive on fusion. It's a much easier story. Um, but I wish the world would embrace fission much more. I, look, I, I may be too optimistic about this, but I think, I, th I think we have paths now to massive, a massive energy transition away from burning carbon. It'll take a while. Those cars are going to keep driving. There's all, you know, there's all of the transport stuff. It'll be a while till there's like a fusion reactor in every cargo ship. Um, but if, if we can drop the cost of energy as dramatically as I hope we can, then the math on carbon capture just so changes. Uh, I still expect, unfortunately, the world is on a path where we're going to have to do something dramatic with climate, like geoengineering as a, as a, as a band-aid, as a stopgap. But I think we do now see a path to the long-term solution. So I, I want to just go back to my question. In terms of moving in the opposite direction, it sounds like the answer is potentially yes on the demand side unless we take drastic action on the supply side. But there, there is no, I, I see no way to supply this, with, to, to manage the supply side without a really big breakthrough. Right. Which is, this is, does this frighten you guys? Because, um, you know, the world hasn't been that versatile when it comes to supply, but AI, as you know, you have pointed out, it's not going to take its time until we start generating enough power. It motivates us to go invest more in fusion and invest more in new storage and, and not only the technology, but what it's going to take to deliver this at the scale that AI needs and that the whole globe needs. So I think it would be not helpful for us to just sit there and be nervous. Uh, we're just like, hey, we see what's coming. We're very high conviction it's coming. How can we use our abilities, uh, our capital, our whatever else to do this? And in the process of that, hopefully deliver a solution for the rest of the world, not just AI training workloads or inference workloads. And it felt like in 2023, we had the beginning of a almost hypothetical conversation about regulating AI. What, what should we in, expect in 2024? And you know, does it, do, do, do governments act? Does it, does it become real? And what, is, what does AI safety look like? So I think we, it is becoming real. You know, the EU is uh, on the cusp of actually finalizing this regulation, which is going to be quite extensive. And the Biden administration uh, wrote the longest executive order, I think, in the history of executive orders uh, covering this technology. And it's being implemented in 2024 because they gave agencies, you know, uh, a bunch of homework for how to implement this and govern this technology. And, and it's happening. So I think it is really moving forward. Um, but what exactly safety looks like of what it even is, I think this is still a conversation we haven't bottomed out on. You know, we founded this frontier model forum in part. Yeah, so maybe that, explain what that yeah. is. So this is, um, for now, this is um, Microsoft, OpenAI, Anthropic, and um, Google. But it will, I think, expand to other frontier labs. But really, right now, all of us are working on safety. We all red team our models. Um, we all do a lot of this work, but we really don't have even a common vocabulary. Um, or a standardized approach. And to the extent that people think like, well, this is just industry, but uh, this is in part in response to many governments <laughs> that have asked us for this very thing. So like, what is it across industry that you think are viable best practices? Is there a risk that regulation 
starts to discourage entrepreneurial activity in, in AI? I mean, I think people are terrified of this. Um, this is why I think Germany and France and Italy in, in, interjected into the EU um, AI Act discussion because they are really concerned about their own domestic industries being sort of undercut before they even had a chance to develop. Were you satisfied with your old boss's executive order? And was, the, <laughs> was there anything in there that uh, you had lobbied against? No. And in fact, it, you know, I think it's, it was really good in that it wasn't just these other restrictions. It's like, and then also, please go and think about how your agency will actually leverage this to do your work better. So I was really encouraged that they actually did have a balanced approach. But what, what can you tell us about GPT-5? And is it an exponential uh, you know, I improvement over what we've seen? Look, I don't know what we're going to call our next model. Um, I don't know when we're Are you going to get creative with the, uh, the naming process? Uh, I don't want to be like shipping iPhone 27. <laughs> um, so you know, it's not my style quite. Uh, but I, I think. The next model we release, uh, I expect it to be very impressive to do new things that were not possible with GPT-4, to do a lot of things better. And I expect us to like take our time and make sure we can launch something that we feel good about and responsible about. Within OpenAI, some employees consider themselves to be, quote, building God. <laughs> is that? I haven't is heard that. that. OK. Is um, I mean, I've heard like people say that facetiously, but uh, I I think almost all employees would say they're building a tool, more so than they thought they were going to be, which they're thrilled about. You know, this confusion in the industry of, are we building a creature, or are we building a tool? Um, I think we're much more building a tool, and that's much better. Uh, to transition like, to something, yeah, oh, go, go ahead. No, 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 no. finish your thought. Oh, I was just going to say, like, the, the, we think of ourselves as tool builders. Um, AI is, much more of a tool than a product, and much, much more of a tool than this like entity. And uh, one of the most wonderful things about last year was seeing just how much people around the world could do with that tool. I mean, they astonished us. And I think we'll just see more and more. And human creativity uh, and ability to like do more with better tools is remarkable. 얼마 전 올려드린 엔비디아의 끝없는 서프라이즈 실적과 빅테크 기업들의 AI 투자는 어쩌면 5년 뒤쯤 세상과 우리 삶의 모습에 아주 큰 변화를 만들지도 모르겠습니다. 상장된 테크 기업들과 산업의 흐름 그리고 이 빅테크 기업들의 비즈니스 모델을 이해하기 위해 공부해야 합니다. 우리도 투자자로서 투자를 통해 세상의 변화와 기업의 발전과 이익에 동참해야겠죠. 인공지능의 발전은 우리 삶의 편리함을 제공하기도 하지만 일론 머스크의 말처럼 먼 미래에는 통제할 수 없는 인류의 가장 큰 위험이 될 수도 있을 겁니다. 제 오피니언을 짧게 말씀드리겠습니다. 미국 정부에서도 규제를 시작했습니다. 하지만 우리가 알아야 할 것은 무엇일까요? 규제의 방향성입니다. 보다 면밀히 관심 가질 필요가 있습니다. 성장 둔화를 위한 규제가 아니라 미국의 AI 기업들이 글로벌 시장을 장악할 수 있도록 안전망을 깔아주는 미국 주도의 룰 세팅이 될 겁니다. 산업 육성에 초점을 두면서 저작권과 사회적 부작용 개선에 초점을 맞추게 될 것입니다. 우리는 미국의 AI 기업들에도 충분한 자산 배분이 필요하다고 생각합니다. 지금은 엔비디아를 중심으로 급성장하고 있지만 아직도 빅테크 기업을 보유하지 못했다고 조급해할 필요는 없습니다. 이렇게 규모가 큰 시장과 비즈니스는 한두 달 만에 모든 것이 끝나지 않을 것이라고 생각합니다. 분명히 기회는 올 겁니다. 그렇기 때문에 미국의 테크 기업들을 면밀히 살피고 세상의 변화를 이끄는 샘 알트만과 같은 리더들의 이야기에 귀 기울여야 합니다. 변화에 빠르게 대응하는 기업들 그리고 비즈니스 모델과 투자 활동 현금 흐름 잉여 현금 흐름에 초점을 맞추며 기업을 분석해 나가야 합니다. 한국도 반도체 산업을 통해 인공지능의 성장에 참여하기를 바라는 마음입니다. 다시 한번 강조드리지만 미국 주도의 룰 세팅은 이미 시작되었고 우리의 미래를 위해 미국 테크 기업의 자산 배분이 반드시 필요하다고 생각합니다. 오늘 영상도 시청해주셔서 감사합니다. 다음 시간에 더 유익한 내용으로 찾아뵙겠습니다. 금융시장 초과 수익 지휘자 알파컨덕터였습니다.